Hello, I'm going to do a book tag today, even though it's not Tag Tuesday, unless it turns out to be if I move things around again. But I've, a couple people are nice enough to tag me on different things. So I want to make sure I get to them all without too much delay. The first one that I saw, so that's what I'll do, is by the inimitable David Novak. Uh, or actually, David Novak tagged me. Uh, apparently, this is a tag that is shrouded in the mists of time um, that we're not sure right now who created it originally. Uh, David was tagged by Triumphal Reads, which I don't think I follow, so I'll be looking uh, forward to that, to start following that person. Anyway, it is called the Intimidating TBR Book Tag. Oh, I should have said the Intimidating uh, David Novak. That would have been a better... Uh, anyway... But he is also inimitable. So uh, there are nine questions. Let's get into it. What book have you been unable to finish? Okay, well, this is actually, I got this idea from the other tag I'm going to do later, but it is one that I've definitely been unable to finish and really get into over the years, and that is Gravity's Rainbow. Or maybe it's V. It's both of them. Anyway, I've tried. Um, Pinch on might come up a lot on this list. Uh, every time I've tried to read Gravity's Rainbow, uh, I, or, or V, um, I should look this up. And I, then I remember it's in present tense. And that right away is one reason that I don't want to get into it. And... It just, it just never really captured my attention. I don't know if I'll ever get to them, frankly, in the in the internet era. There were a lot of big, difficult books I was able to read when I was younger, but there was no internet then. You know, somebody asked me once how I was able to read Finnegan's Wake and Ulysses, and it was because there was no inter internet. I read Ulysses like five times, I think. I loved it. Finnegan's Wake, can I say I read it? I definitely say I, I definitely can say I looked at all the words on every page. Um, parts of it I can make sense out of. Um, I have an understanding of it, mostly thanks to the Anthony Burgess book on Joyce. Anyway, uh, what is a book you've been, what is a book, on, so number two, what book have you yet to read because you just haven't had the time? I would put Amor Tolls in that category, Gentleman of Moscow. Speaking of a book um, that is very popular on BookTube and very popular in the world and that I think I would like, but I just haven't got around to it. Maybe since I'm very susceptible to suggestion apparently and I do a lot of uh, reading events now, maybe if somebody creates an Amor Tolls reading event, I'll join that and read it. Okay, what book have you been, you have yet to read because it's a sequel? That would be, and I can't think of the name of it right now, or it actually applies to the whole series. It'd be the, uh, the Culture Books by um, Ian M. Banks, the science fiction series, Future History. I didn't finish the first book. Had an audiobook version of it when... I was doing a lot of audiobooks because uh, because of, of my job. Uh, I didn't finish it for whatever reason. Sometimes audiobooks, and this is why I don't end up listening to many of them anymore. They just go. They move too slow compared to my reading uh, pace. So I think I wanted to read it faster, but I didn't have the time or something, and I just fell away from it. I really think I would like the culture books. I really like the concept of them. The first one's probably not the best one because he probably improved as a writer and, and proved as a and as a, proved as a world builder as he went along. And I find that's true of a lot of series. I should probably just skip around more in series because there have been other series like crime series, for example, like uh, I would say the Elizabeth George mystery novels, Inspector Lindley and mystery novels, I think. I tried the first one of those. I have to blow my nose. I'll be back. 
Okay, at least you were spared that. The Elizabeth George and Inspector Lindley novels, the first one really didn't grab me. The first one, and if you look at the books as a series, those Lindley books, um, the later ones are a lot thicker. The first few are probably not as good. She probably improved vastly as she went along. I think I would... Uh, Enjoy the later ones, but I, I still kind of have an issue not starting at the beginning of a series, even a crime series like that. And I'm, I probably should just skip ahead to like one of the big thick ones like Well Schooled in Murder, which is a, such a great title. Um, so that's my, that's my answer to that one. Okay, so number four, it's brand new. I don't really worry about that so much. Um, there's a book I just saw on Steve Donahue's channel that he received as an ARC uh, in one of his mail things, the new uh, Nicholas Meyer Sherlock Holmes pastiche, which is called The Telegram of, of some type. Um, so I haven't been able to finish that first because it's not even published until August. And um, any book that's brand new right now, I'm not able to finish because I am doing a no download. I'll have cheated a few times and a no purchase uh, until I finish 100 books and I'm only around 24 or something. So I've got to read another 75 books before I read anything else that's brand new. But that is one that I would, I would want to read if it were available. Okay, what have you been able to finish because you read a book by the same author and didn't enjoy it? Well, that would be too numerous to mention because I'm not going to read anything. I think it would be more interesting if I could think of something that I did read a second book even after not enjoying the first one, but... I don't know. You don't have to answer all these. That's that's a rule that I've learned is that if you can't think of one, just move on. So maybe I'll come back to it. Okay, so number six, uh, you're just not in the mood for it. Okay, this happens a lot because I have books that come in on my, my library app, on the whatever you call the library app, that... For example, here's two of them right there. This Anthony Horowitz novel. I love that series. Uh, uh, I forget the name of the series, but anyway. Um, and this Judy Dench book on Shakespeare. I really am looking forward to both those books. They both came up in the last few weeks. It's available for download, and you have the option on this app to uh, delay them if you want, if you're not ready. And that happens to me all the time with books I want to read. But they come available on the library app, and I don't want to read them right now. So those are two that apply to that. Now i got to get back to the questions. You're just not in the mood for it. Number seven, it's humongous. Okay, that's another one that always comes up on my library app that I've been delaying reading for years, and that's Jerusalem by Alan Moore, which is a huge-ass book. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of, after I put it on hold, I put it, on the aside so many times that I'm probably out of the mood for it. I read Alan Moore's, and I guess this would fall for uh, number five. You read a book by the same author and didn't enjoy it, although I kind of enjoyed it. I read Alan Moore's recent, fairly recent short story collection, which I can't think of the name of is. I'll try to remember to put it in the comments. It's a, It's got a couple good stories in it, a couple bad stories. It's got a whole novel stuck in there about the comic book industry. Uh, mainstream novel about the comic book industry, which is pretty good three quarters of the way through, then it just sort of peters out. So I may have just moved past Alan Moore as an interest. Anyway, number eight, because it was a cover buy that turned out to be to have poor reviews, um, there's probably nothing, I probably have nothing for this one. The last book I remember specifically buying because of the cover 
I can't even remember the name of it now. It was years ago. Uh, uh, something, it was about a magician, magician or something. It was like Carter. Uh, well, it looked like it was kind of like designed, I mean, not written to be an imitation of Cavalier and Clay by Michael Chabin. This is how long ago it was. But it sort of packaged like like that. It was going to be like a literary novel about like a popular culture. I think it was about a ma magician or something. Uh, I don't know what ever happened to that writer. I don't think, I don't know how much he wrote after that. Carter, magician novel. And I bought that for the, because of the cover. Because the cover reminded me of Cavalier and Clay's. It was supposed to, oh, it's going to show up. Carter Magician novel. And it was an okay book. Um, Carter, Carter Beats the Devil by Glenn David Gold uh, was the last time I remember ever buying a book based on the cover. And I did finish it, but, um, you know, I thought, it was, I thought it was okay. So that was kind of a trend that was going on for a while, literary novels that were sort of packaged like that and everything um, but I think it probably got good reviews it doesn't probably really doesn't fit the the question okay what is the most intimidating book on your TBR pile well that brings up the question is what is my TBR pile is it every book that I uh, want to read is it every book i've got on my kindle is it every book it's not every book that i've got on my kindle is it every book that i've downloaded on my kindle though downloaded which is the most intimidating of these i have some intimidating stuff here i'm working through the decline and fall it's not intimidating though it's just a matter of finding the time for it um i think there is one here though there is this big book by a Spanish writer, and I have it in Spanish, and it's going to be years before I can read this book. I want to read it. I feel like it's going to be way too difficult um, to read in Spanish. Okay, this book, but I really want to read it. Maybe this doesn't count because I'm really intimidated by the language. If if I would break down and read read a Spanish uh, uh, an English translation of it, and there's probably some in the public domain, uh, it's this family saga from I think the 1800s, Fortunata and Asinta dos Flores de Casadas. Uh, it's about two marriages. Um, it is a book by. Benito Perez Galdos, that's probably the most intimidating, but, you know, to be fair, it's mostly intimidating because it's an older book in a language I barely understand. Um, intimidating, intimidating, intimidating. One book, I, one more book I wanted to mention here that I haven't read because... Well, I guess maybe this counts. A Raw Youth, A Raw Youth by Dostoevsky, which I've got uh, an old free translation of. Um, hard to find uh, the the Constance Garnett translation of that, but I think I w had to sideload it from somewhere. Um, it's not that popular of a book, although it is in a couple of anthologies of a thousand classics you must read before you die kind of things that I finally found I had it anyway. So Dostoevsky, it's the f there's the four big Dostoevsky novels that everyone praises, and and that's uh, Crime and Punishment, uh, um, uh, the uh, I'm forgetting one, then Demons, and then uh, Brothers Karamazov, and uh, the other one, The Innocent, The Prince, what's it called? Oh, The Idiot. Oh. 
And I'm an idiot because I can't remember the name of the idiot. Anyway, so early on in my, in my reading career, I, I read uh, Crime Punishment. Loved it. Read, skipped ahead for some reason to Brothers Karamazov. Didn't read Demons or The Idiot until I think last year. So I decided last year or whatever it was, I would try and read the rest of these. Now, since the only one I haven't read of his major works, I've read all the shorter ones too, is A Raw Youth, although it gets terrible reviews. It's really not very popular. It's, But I feel like I should read it. And I've got a copy of it. And so, and that's one I keep putting off because, you know, the bad reviews and all that and or the bad, bad reputation and it's just a little waste of time. So I guess that I could have actually added that to many of the questions. I could have said a raw youth for... Uh, for it's humongous, uh, big, uh, I didn't buy it for the cover, but it it does have poor reviews. Anyway, so those are the most intimidating books on my TBR. I think I'm not intimidated by the other five volumes of *Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire*. But I am intimidated by the time commitment because I have so many other things I've committed to. And I'm trying to read as many books as I can right now for my challenge so that I can go ahead and compulsively buy every book in the world again. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. That That is the thing I'm going to put now, of course, uh, tagging people. Uh, I'm going to have to look at this. I'm not going to mention anybody here because I don't know. When I'm, I'm going to have to think about it more and maybe I'll tag. Like I was tagged in another video. Maybe I'll tag all the people. Maybe I'll flip them. I'll tag all the people that are tagged in this one with the other one and tag all the people that are tagged in that one with this one or something or, or, or not tag anybody. I, I don't know. Anyway, this is a pretty good one. I hope uh, people do it. Whether you're tagged or not, consider yourself tagged, and we'll talk later.